Redskins meet the Eagles. Randall Cunningham has the Eagles soaring on offense, leading them to three straight victories, aided by the versatility of Herschel Walker. The recharged Eagles defense has been equally efficient. Redskins rookie quarterback Heath Schuler gets his second start tonight, but the Skins will need some special teams flair from Brian Mitchell to challenge the Eagles. The NFL on TNT is next. Welcome to the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, and Veterans Stadium, where tonight two NFC East rivals, the Washington Redskins and the Philadelphia Eagles, meet on TNT Sunday Night Special, an intense rivalry in which 18 of the last 27 games have been decided by seven points or less. Hi again, everybody. I'm Gary Bender. The Philadelphia Eagles have won three in a row, and they are coming off one of the most impressive wins in years, defeating San Francisco 48. They right now look like a playoff team and may be playing as well as anybody in the NFL. The Redskins, on the other hand, were embarrassed last week, losing to Dallas 34-7, experiencing their worst offensive output in 33 years. And they come in tonight, surprisingly, with nine straight losses against an NFC East opponent. With me is Pat Hayden, and Pat, in visiting with Rich Kotite, he talked about what a great win that was in San Francisco, but he said it's ancient history. Well, it really was a big win for Philadelphia, but you know, as Calvin Williams, the wide receiver, said, it was a big early season win for us, and in the NFL, it's an every week kind of business, and Rich Kotite also said to us yesterday, he goes, you know, if we don't win tonight, that win over San Francisco last week means diddly, and for Washington, they're trying to forget last week as well, Gary, you know, as you mentioned, they played awfully, and if they're going to win tonight, they have to do two things, they have to run the ball better. Now, Reggie Brooks will not play tonight because he's injured. Ricky Irvins will start. And the other thing is they can't turn the ball over early in this football game. They're not the kind of team that can overcome a lot of early mistakes. Pat, we've known for years that Randall Cunningham is a superior talent. But this year, he has a better supporting cast. He doesn't have to go out and do it all by himself anymore. Yeah, and you know that he knows that. And he's using all his weapons, and he's got a lot more. He's off to another very good start, Randall Cunningham. As you see, the seven touchdowns, only the one interceptions. We talk about all the weapons. You start with his wide receivers, Fred Barnett, Calvin Williams, you're mixing in a little bit of Mark to, uh, Bavaro, a dash of Herschel Walker, but I think what has made Cunningham better, certainly last week, was the emergence of the running game, and this man right here, Charlie Garner, look at what he did last week in his first start for the Eagles, he'll start again tonight, and Charlie Garner gives Randall Cunningham a guy, a running back, that can go 20, 30, 40 yards at a time. Redskin quarterback Heath Schuler is the third pick in the draft this year, the highest pick the Redskins have had in 30 years. He had his first start last week in the first half, completed only five of 20 passes. He trailed at halftime 30, one to nothing. He's hoping start number two, he has more success. Well, I, I know all the uh, all his teammates are hoping he has a lot more success. And the thing about him is what they have to do tonight is really give him a lot better protection than they did a week ago. He was sacked twice, but he was pressured all evening. You see the one interception. And I think we talked about the running game, that he's got to get that going. The other thing Gary Heath Schuler has to do, he has to be able to read this Eagle blitz. And I, I promise you, the Eagles are going to come after him. They're going to blitz him. And he's got to read that blitz. He's got to call the audible. He's got to throw the ball outside, I think, to Henry Ellard. You know, through the years, the Redskins have taken great pride in their offensive line. They called them the Hogs, but they haven't been playing like the Hogs. They need to step up tonight and protect Heath. Well, you know, they didn't do a very good job last week, and Jim Lachey was embarrassed at left tackle. And so they've got to do a better job this week of protecting him and keeping people out of his face. But they're playing against a very good defensive line in the Eagles. This is a defensive line that really has changed over the years. Look what's happened. 1991, this was the number one rated defense in the entire NFL. And it started with guys like Reggie White and Brown and Pitts and Simmons. Two years later, 93, a different front four. And again, in 94, only Harmon is the returning starter. But if the Eagles are going to win tonight, it's going to start with that defensive line. Rich Kotite, the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles in his fourth year. That makes him the dean of the NFC East coaches. 29 wins in the first three years. That's the most for any Eagles coach. And miraculously, he's held this team together despite a siege of injuries and free agency losses. Calmer this year. He has a new owner in Jeffrey Lurie. He loves the chemistry of this Philadelphia team. Norv Turner, his counterpart. 42 years old. Third coach in three seasons for the Skins. He signed a five-year contract after the last three years being the offensive coordinator for the Cowboys. He's one of the best coaching minds in the business. 
And uh, Troy Aikman, who was with him in Dallas, says that guys genuinely like to play for him. He has 27 new players this year. The kickoff will go to Brian Mitchell of the Redskins. And Mitchell will bring it out, still on his feet to the 35, the 40, to the 50. Mitch Berger is over there, the man who kicks up and runs him out of bounds. We have an eagle shaking up on the play. Back at the 40-yard line, but that ends up being a 69-yard kickoff return by Brian Mitchell, who leads the NFL in punt returns. Okay, the one thing the Redskins have done well this year, Gary, is played very good special teams. Good wedge box. You see number 77 and 22 there. That's Whitecheck and Johnson leading the way. And then there, it was just Mitchell spinning and turning. I tell you, you, get a, you start a game like that, and it can give a rookie quarterback a lot of confidence. They're in a great field position. They need to turn this into a score. I mean, he, he leads the NFL in all-purpose yards. Punt returns, kickoffs, rushing yards, receiving yards. I mean, he's a dynamic player, particularly on special teams. It started with a wedge, a little spin move, and then the kicker brings him out. Okay, there's Rose, number 55 for the Eagles, and 55 for the, uh, for the uh, Skins is Collins. He ties him up. He kind of bounces off, and a great job of Andre Collins, by Andre Collins, who's a starting linebacker playing special teams, and he, want, he was the one who really threw the key block for Mitchell. The reason we have a delay is we have an eagle that was shaken up on that kickoff, and Mitchell, that great spin move, and Norv Turner could not have scripted a start to a game any better than this. They're at the 33-yard line. We'll check the number just as soon as we can. It's Derek Oden who is a second-year man out of Alabama, who they use a lot on special teams, being assisted from the field. And so Heath Schiller will have good field position. Last week in his first start, the first rookie to start for the Redskins since 1961. He's a cornerstone of Norv Turner's rebuilding process. He's a terrific athlete, powerful arm, quick release. And according to Norv Turner, he had a great week of practice. And he seemed to be a lot calmer this year as opposed or this week as opposed to last week. Yeah, he seemed pretty calm to me yesterday. And you know, the thing about he's Schuler, or for any rookie quarterback, Gary, is that you know a running game is a rookie quarterback's best friend. And establishing that running game. What does that mean? That means guys breaking tackles, hitting the right hole, and when there's not a hole there, making your own hole. So if they're going to win, it's a running game that's going to have to set up Heath Schuler. And they come in here 27th of the NFL in that department, and without Reggie Brooks, Ricky Irvin starting instead. Henry Allard goes in motion. This is Irvin. Irvin's kind of a forgotten man last year, doesn't get anything there. William Fuller was over there to make the stop. Heath Schuler's offensive core looks like this. Desmond Howard, the Heisman Trophy winner in 1991. They're looking for him to explode on the scene. You saw what Mitchell can do. Eller, the all-time leading receiver for the Rams before coming over. Lachey, he's still battling back. Did not have a good game last week as Charles Haley drove him crazy, as did the Dallas Cowboys. Second down and 11, a loss of one. Schuler with time. Dumps it off incomplete. He had time, and Cedric Smith, who's been activated for this game, a fullback over the middle, could not hang on. Defensively, Philadelphia comes in here third in the NFL, and a lot of new faces. Fuller coming over from the Oilers. Townsend coming over from the Raiders. A year ago, Perry was cut loose by the Bears. Linebacking-wise, Bud Carson says that Byron Evans is the best middle linebacker in the NFL. And you could say that Eric Allen's as good as anybody playing that cornerback spot. Third and 11. Schuler with excellent protection, now breaking down, gets rid of the ball. He had time, and then pouring through was Andy Harmon. Harmon is playing with a fiberglass cast on a broken right thumb, still in the face of Heath Schuler. Fourth down. Yeah, Gary, that, that was one I don't think Heath Schuler really should have scrambled on. I mean, that was one he could have stepped up into the pocket and delivered the ball to receiver. I mean, he got flushed out of there a little bit too early. Number three punter in the NFC, Reggie Roby, standing to the 50. He's had five inside the 20, one touchback coming into this ball game. Jeff Seidner is back for Philadelphia.
Roby trying to keep it in the field of play. Down there nicely, the Redskins, but they can't save it. It goes into the end zone. Excellent effort that time by Johnny Thomas, who they call a screamer on the special teams because he screams down the field, just could not feel the ball. The well, touchback brings it to the 20. Yeah, the game started uh, with a great special teams play by the Redskins, but Thomas just can't get it done. That would have been a great break for the Redskins if he could have kept it in the field of play. Well, the Redskins, in effect, have wasted a 69-yard kickoff return by Brian Mitchell. And so now, coming up with the football, Randall Cunningham, who's won the last 17 starts here in Veterans Stadium. Second time in three years coming back from a season-ending injury and playing with some confidence. last week and Garner picks up five yards to the 25. Well, Garner exploded on the scene last week in Candlestick Park. 16 carries of 111 yards and this guy, the second round draft pick out of Tennessee, was a college teammate of Heath Shooters. Barnett along with Williams have come into the league the same time. They've been together five years and they really know the talents of Randall Cunningham and this offensive line is vastly improved. The best since Rich Kotite has been the head coach. They have three number one draft picks including this year's Bernard Williams, and we'll talk more about him. He is a house. Second down and four. Randall Cunningham on the far side. The completion is made for the first down. Calvin Williams, who had nine catches for 122 yards last week, starts out like he did last week. Defensively, this Washington team has a lot of new faces. Tony Woods played for the Rams last year. They have a veteran, Tim Johnson, who was hurt early in the year of the hamstring problem. Ken Harvey coming over from the Cardinals, along with Stowe. Both of them were starters last year for now the Arizona Cardinals. Carter had an interception last week. And Daryl Morrison, well, he's only in his second year. He's growing up fast at that free safety spot. Go, 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 go. little confusion. Somebody doesn't know where to line up. And so Randall Cunningham is going to have to call for a time. That somebody was Maurice Johnson. He started. That's one of those yeah. places where you can't be inconspicuous, right? I got it. You take it. You know, he was on the line. He was off the line. He was back on the line. I mean, there was some, there was some dancing going on there. <laughs> so they're going to back it up five yards. Maurice Johnson, though, when they get those two tight ends going, Mark Bavaro and Maurice Johnson, they play that two tight ends with the one back. I mean, that's where Charlie Garner had all the big runs last week. Herschel Walker now the lead back for Charlie Garner. Walker will appear a lot of places tonight. Randall Cunningham will double it off to Garner. One catch last week for 28 yards, and he gets back to the original line of scrimmage before he's tackled. And Tyrone Stowe over there to make the stop. Now, this guy was hurt in the second preseason game. He suffered a stress fracture of his upper rib, which is right under his shoulder, his right shoulder. They have special pads for him, and it was sore all week long. He did not get a lot of practice time. Yeah, they're not going to hit him much during practice. Not that much of the contact stuff, and that may go on all year long, Gary, but that's okay. As long as he has that explosion on Sunday afternoon, Sunday nights, I mean, that's okay. He didn't need to practice much. Second down and ten. Mark Bavaro, who's playing so well for this team, dropped it at the 40-yard line. But as Pat mentioned, uh, that penalty will go against Washington. Yeah, free play, and Fred Barnett did the right thing. I mean, he, he went deep. Everybody knew they had a free play. He was double covered, but Barnett and Cunningham were on the same page. Offside, number 94, defense. Five yards, repeat, second down. Now, we have seen this happen a lot this year. You know you have a free play. There's Barnett, and you don't slow down. You just keep on going. Didn't throw it to him because it was double covered, Johnny, there. But he could have still given him a chance because it was uh, well, an interception. Would, would have hurt him. So the penalty now makes it second down and five. Benningham giving off to Garner. Garner running behind that big offensive line. Comes out of there. Fighting for the first down and knocked out of bounds. And one of the things about him, he hides behind that offensive line with his quickness. This offensive line, as Rich Kotai was telling us, is now given second and third efforts because they know he can bust one. You're right. The left side of the offensive line, you know, Bernard